Hi, this is Abdullah, and this is the Nokia XR20. It's a device trying to combine between being a rugged device as well as being a mainstream device. So let me unbox it, talk about its quirks and features, and what you can expect. So do keep in mind that this is the European version of the device that I have over here. So it's gonna have different things in the box compared to the Middle Eastern version, for example, which according to their website will actually come with a charger, with a headset and with a screen protector applied on the display. So inside the box, you get a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. Product information booklet. And the SIM ejection tool. And here it is, the XR20. Now, as you've noticed, you don't really get a lot in the box. There's no wall charger and there's no protective case. And you don't really need the latter because this phone is a tank. Let's have a look at it. Okay, wow. This phone is definitely heavier than what a usual smartphone would feel like in the hand. And that's because it weighs 248 grams, which is about 30 grams more than the X20. So what makes the XR20 a rugged device? For a start, you get Gorilla Glass Victus on the front, which is the toughest Gorilla Glass available at the moment. The device has certification for military standard 810H, so it can withstand up to a 1.8 meter drop. It also has an IP68 water and dust resistance, so it shouldn't have any problems being submerged in sand or underwater. And the device is built out of a combination of a polymer composite and aluminum. So you get aluminum sides with some really nice design touches, such as the Nokia logo over here. And the back is made out of this polymer composite, which is 3D textured to add a bit of grip. And on the inside, there is an aluminum core, which enhances the rigidity of the device and makes sure that it's structurally sound and won't bend or twist. Overall, I think they've done such a fantastic job with the design of this rugged device. Yeah, it's not as elegant looking as a standard device, but it doesn't feel as unsightly as most of the rugged devices you'll find out there. So while we wait for the phone to set up, let me walk you through some of its specs. So on the front, you get a 6.67 inch IPS LCD display with a 1080p resolution. And the display even works with gloves, which is really cool. And the XR20 is running on the Snapdragon 480 5G chipset with an Adreno 619 GPU. The phone comes with two different configurations for the memory setup. So you can either get it in four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of built-in storage, or six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of built-in storage. You also get a hybrid dual SIM slot, which supports an SD card if you want to expand the memory. Now, in terms of battery capacity, you get a 4,630 milliamps battery, which should in theory be able to to last you for up to two days of usage. Now, as for charging, the device is capable of charging at a speed of up to 18 watts. And the cool thing is it also supports 15 watts of wireless charging. There is a dual speaker setup on this device. So you have a speaker at the top of the device and a speaker at the bottom of the device. And Nokia is saying they go up to 96 decibels of volume, which is pretty loud. Let's test out the dual speakers. Okay, so the real speakers are actually very, very loud. However, at the top volume, they're not exactly very clear. So you do sacrifice a bit of quality in order to gain a bit of loudness. On the right hand side, you get the volume rocker keys and a fingerprint scanner, which has been integrated into the power button. And it works pretty well. Not the fastest thing I've tested, but pretty reliable. I do have to say though that the power button isn't very clicky. The volume keys are. On the left hand side, you get the Google Assistant button, which luckily can be disabled, but sadly can't be reprogrammed. And it has this textured finish, which is quite nice. Now on the top of the device, you get this reprogrammable emergency key, which you can set up to open any app quickly. And I really love this feature. On the bottom, you get a lanyard hole, which I really like. A 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a USB-C charging cable port. As for the camera setup on the back, you get a 48 megapixel main camera and a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera, both with Carl Zeiss optics. Luckily, this device doesn't include any of the Kimiki cameras that you usually find on other devices just to increase the camera count. 
And something really cool is that this device has a dual LED flash and a single LED flash. And both of them can be switched on at the same time for a super bright torch. Something that I think is really useful for such a device. And the whole camera is protected by the raised edges around the camera bump. The selfie camera is an 8 megapixel shooter. <laughs> Let's test out the selfie camera. Eh, it's okay. Better than I expected, to be honest. The camera interface is very similar to what you get on the X10 and the X20. So you get all the usual modes like portrait mode, night mode, time lapse, pro mode. But there are two additional features that you find here. One is action cam, which captures very steady footage. And the other is speed warp which is basically like hyperlapse video. And even though the phone doesn't have a telephoto camera, it basically crops from the main camera for a 2x zoom experience. And the result is okay. Not as good as having a dedicated telephoto camera, but it's still pretty okay. The ultra wide camera is much better than the one you find on the X10 and the X20, thanks to the higher resolution. However, it still suffers from the lack of sharpness that's notable on most ultra wide cameras. And for the videographers out there, the phone is limited to 1080p at 60 frames per second. So there's no option to shoot in 4K. However, the phone does come with also audio. So it uses two microphones in order to capture high quality audio and to minimize wind noise. Cinema mode, which captures a 21 by nine aspect ratio video and the ability to capture H-Log format in order to fine tune your video later on in editing. And cinema editor, which adds fake lens flare if you're into that kind of thing. And you also get manual controls the video so you can play around with exposure, ISO, shutter speed, autofocus and white balance. And Portrait has Zeiss enhanced bokeh effects so you can play around with the shape of the bokeh effect and how prominent the bokeh effect is on selfies. In terms of connectivity the USB-C supports USB on the go and USB 3.0 speeds too which is cool. And the Wi-Fi supports even the latest AX standards and there's even Wi-Fi dual band support too alongside NFC which should help with mobile payments. Now as for the software the XR20 is running on Android 11 and it's a part of the Android one program. So it's promised three years of OS updates, which means that it's going to go all the way to Android 14 and four years of security updates, which is really cool. So if you're one of those people that likes to keep his device for a long period of time, I think you'll really appreciate these two aspects. Other than the updates, the advantage of Android one is that it's a pretty lightweight OS and comes with barely any bloatware pre-installed. So you only get Amazon Shopping, Spotify, and ExpressVPN, and all of them can be uninstalled, luckily. Wait, so it doesn't need the very best hardware in order to offer you a smooth and quick experience. Which, in combination with the Snapdragon 480, which is an okay performer, means that this device actually feels pretty snappy to use on a daily basis. However, if you're a gamer, for example, you might want a device with slightly better CPU-GPU combination something with a Snapdragon 750 or above. Now, the disadvantage of Android One is that it's not as customizable as some of the other skins that you can find out there. So for example, on this device, you can't change the shape of the icons. You can't install a theme. You can't remove the Google search bar from the bottom of the page without disabling the Google Assistant. Anyways, this is a pretty unique device in the current market because it's trying to combine between a rugged device and a mainstream device. So as a rugged device, it offers a lot of nice features like the dual speaker setup, wireless charging, some nice camera options and features, snappy performance, and a very nice design for a rugged device. As a mainstream device, you definitely have to accept some compromises. So for example, for the price that you pay for this, you can definitely get a mainstream device that won't have the same levels of protection that offers a better screen and a faster processor. So whether you're willing to accept the compromises in order to get a device that is pretty much life-proof or not is completely dependent on you. That's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying my content and i shall see you in the next one